Hi, this is Dev Chati Thakur from Informatica R&D and this is the fourth video of Informatica Big Data Management on Azure. In this video, we are going to configure the client VM so that it is able to communicate with the domain. Next, we will run a mapping to test the current configuration. We might see some failures and to fix that, we will run the ready-to-go script on the service side. After the changes are done successfully, we will rerun the same mapping to test the change configuration and see if that passes. Now we will log into the machine on which Informatica Developer Client is installed. Look at the host file under C, Windows System32 Drivers, etc folder. Edit the file and add the host entry of the VM on which the master node is running. Next, we will open the developer client and test the connection to the domain from the client. I need to execute this step because the node VM is not in the same virtual network and though the VM is public, the client VM cannot search it with its DNS name. Now, I will go ahead and log into the client VM. So here I have the machine on which the client is installed. Before we proceed and edit the host file, let us open the developer client and test the connection to the domain. So here I have the machine on which the client is installed. Before we proceed and edit the host file, let us open the developer client and test the connection. I have the domain pre-configured, so I will try to edit that and with the same settings, with the same host name, I will try to test the connection. So far, I have not yet added the host entry in the etc hosts file. Ah, so here we can see the connection has failed. We'll click on OK. Now we'll go to our etc host file. And since I have already configured this, so I'll remove the host entry command. I'll save the file. And now I'll go ahead and test the connection. So here, so here we can see the test connection does not have any issue and we can go ahead and connect to the model repository service. So here I can see that the MRS has been connected successfully and I, have, I can see the project which we have imported is getting loaded. Now let us run a complex type mapping and see if that passes with the current configuration. Let us execute this current mapping. So you can see the mapping that we want to execute. I'll go ahead and run the mapping. Ah, the mapping has ended with errors. So it says that there is some Azure exception and the string is not a valid base 64 encoder string. So now we'll try to fix this using the ready to go script. For that, I'll switch to the, to the VM on which the master node is running. In our deployment, we have opted to create a new HDNZ cluster with Azure storage as the primary storage. So we will use the ready-to-go script that has been specifically written to execute that scenario. 
But before we proceed, let us go ahead and check the slide that gives us a bit more information about the ready to go scripts. Based on the type of deployment paths, we have three sets of files. One for new HDNZ cluster on Azure Storage, one for new HDNZ cluster on Data Lake Store, and the last for an HDNZ existing cluster on Azure Storage. We will now jump to the location where the files are stored and take a look. For that, we'll switch to the VM now. So let us traverse to the directory where the ready to go scripts are present. In this location, I should be able to see three files, three sets of files, sorry. So each, each set is comprised of a shell script and that is for a specific scenario and an input file to provide the values of that scenario. For our case, we will use the ready to go new wasp cluster.sh file. Which we can, which is this one. This current file that we have selected. The input properties file have few fields and we can definitely go and check out those. So the corresponding to this, uh, this is a shell script. We have this property file that we need to go ahead and edit. So this file, it has few fields and for my case, those are pre-populated but it has sufficient explanation as comments right above each corresponding fields. We can go ahead, edit the input files and set the required parameters. At this point, you can refer to the documentation to know how to retrieve the values of those fields. And once we are done providing the values, we can run the script. I'll go ahead and now run the script. Ah, so I can see the execution of the shell script has completed. So this script will generate an output file at the user home directory. Now let us go back to the home directory and check that file. So you want to look at this file that, has, that says ready to go new wasp cluster.log. Similarly, if you have gone for gone and run for uh, new ADLS cluster, the same log would have been generated here and you can go ahead and check that. So I can see that the storage account keys has been updated, the properties has been updated and ADLS connection that has been updated successfully as well. Now we will switch to the developer client. We'll close this. We need to refresh the MRS here. Now let's go ahead and run the same mapping. So previously we have run this mapping which failed. And now we, we are going to go ahead and run the same mapping. We need to wait a bit and check if the execution gets successful.
So here I can see that the mapping was successfully ran. I can click on the link to open the log and search for the success message. I can see the final status as succeeded. Finally, we have fixed the configuration and the same mapping that failed earlier is now passing successfully. At this point, we are pretty much clear how useful and easy the ready to go script is and how it can be executed. You can go ahead and execute any mapping or the mapping should work fine as expected from now onwards, just because we have fixed the configuration. With this, we are going to end this video. Thank you for watching the video.